Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fantasims and welcome to my channel. In today's video we are going to see how I built this little steampunk coal factory as part of a huge collaboration of over 60 simmers from my beautiful friend Ivory M's Sims Winter Village. And yes, I know it's not Christmas anymore, but it's still a fun winter build you can enjoy any time of the year. So this video is longer than my usual speed builds because it is split into two parts so you can always skip ahead to the playtest tour at the end or click on the cog icon at the bottom of this video and increase the playback speed so it takes you less time to watch. All right, Alright, let's dig into the good stuff. So for this collaboration I had two 20 by 15 lots and so I thought it would be a bit of cheeky fun for one of the lots to do a coal factory with the idea that, you know, Santa needs a place to get his coal supply for the naughty kids so I wanted to create like a steampunk 1800s industrial coal factory and I'm not very good at building on small lots but I thought hey two 20 by 15 lots shouldn't take me longer than a massive 64 by 64 lot but I was so wrong <laughs> these builds took me forever because you guys know I always overdo it on the decorations and cluttering and cluttering the build. As you can see, I have all these objects surrounding this tiny little lot trying to figure out what I wanted to use because I'm a visual person. So I always forget, like I kind of know what's in the catalog of objects, but if I don't see it right in front of me, I don't think to look for a certain object or to use it. So I like to spend some time at the beginning finding all the objects. And as you can see over here, I jumped over to a 64 by 64 lot because I just needed more room to spread all the stuff out and I thought I had this idea down great because I created a floor that's one tile smaller on each side from the 20 by 15 lot because you know you can't really build in that final square around the edge of the lot. So I wanted to make sure it was the right size and I didn't realize till I was done, pretty much done building it, that I had made it one tile too wide. So I ended up having to crop off a tile width of the build on the right hand side, which was a bit of a bummer, but it was okay. I, ma I managed to make it work. And so I got this idea of turning the Get Famous Arch, one of them upside down to create kind of a circular shaped window uh, or the illusion of it rather. And so I will say that doing a 20 by 15 lot really challenged me to think differently about how to shape the build, how to pull off the amount of detail I wanted in such a smaller space. So I think I'm going to try and do a lot more smaller lots, especially because I'm always going for the 64 by 64, but there's only a handful of them, even if you own all the worlds. And so you're going to have you know if, if I want to fill up a world with tons of different builds then I really need to start doing them in a bunch of different sizes so th so this one really opened my eyes to trying out new things and of course I love debug objects and I used a lot of things from Journey to Batu, Eco Lifestyle, um, vampires that's how I kind of created the entrance and then I thought of making these really tall columns so something when you're trying to create a layout I'm not always the best at shells like creating the shell shape I kind of make it up as I go I'm a visual person I have to I don't always have the entire idea in my head straight away but um, you always want to try and do something called the rule of thirds when you're designing Things just always look a lot better in thirds so it helps to have things in like three different levels or group things together in groups of threes so I created these two really tall towers on the side that kind of flow into the size of the left side of the building and then on the left I thought it would be cool to create this pretend rotating wheel like it's helping to move the coal along a conveyor belt which I make later but I wanted to create a front part right here with just an elevated area that maybe put a barbecue on something interesting to do at the front of the building and then here I'm just trying to figure out how I want to do the roofing and I love the machine is it machine <laughs> Moschino Machino I can't remember. I don't know how to pronounce it anyway that pack has those really cool industrial windows um, and then I just added a bunch of chimneys because I knew that in live mode I wanted it to just be really smoky uh, really bad for the environment type of building 
And so I created a, a few chimney stacks and then I oversized these lanterns and turned the uh, ceiling decoration from Journey to Batu upside down but I kept having this problem that every time I would come back to the lot to work on it the thing the ceiling thing from Journey to Batu that I rotated upside down it kept disappearing and it was driving me crazy so I don't know whether that's a build glitch or it's because it's a ceiling object that I rotated upside down I don't know but here in the back I really didn't know what shape I wanted and so I kept trying to create like more interesting shapes around the building so it wasn't just a box and then here I was playing with the idea of creating the kitchen over here but I ended up deleting that and turning it into something else instead I'm just working on this very tight entryway and this bathroom ended up having to be cut in half it was already a tiny bathroom but again the build was one tile too wide so it ends up just being a toilet without a sink which is not very hygienic but I figured hey it's the 1800s <laughs> they didn't know as much about hygiene so it's just a separate toilet room which actually they did have I think in Victorian times like a separate room with the toilet and then you'd have to come back inside or something to use a sink or whatever and then I love the debug cables and wires from Journey to Batu, so I wanted it to have this electronic feel to it because you know the Victorian era electricity was just being in, in the late 1800s there was some electricity so I thought it would be I thought it would be cool to have all those wires hanging everywhere and I love these pipes from Eco Lifestyle and there's one that's slightly tilted I think at a 45 degree angle and it created a really cool slope which you'll see in a minute um, I don't know why but there's certain objects I love rotating and other objects that feel a bit more like a chore and rotating these pipes kind of felt like a chore but I really wanted the end result so as you can see it's this slight angle I think it was a 45 degree angle and it just it creates flow to a build so something else when you're designing a build is you want to create a sense of movement in your build and normally that's like a, an S shape like if you have like a snake like flow to your build so it takes your eye from maybe the right to the left to the center or whatever I mean maybe I'll do a video where I explain kind of rules of design uh, maybe because that'll help any of you guys with coming up with shapes for your builds um, but basically I wanted to create a shape that kind of took your eye from one side of the build to the other and then most of this build actually was me creating problems because I was cramming so many details in that I then had to come up with objects to hide things that were poking through the walls or poking through the ceiling or stuff like that so um, the latter part of building this I had to do a lot of figuring out what objects I could use and playing around with ideas I ended up putting, uh, from Journey to Batu, there's this debug object of like, um, I don't know what it, I know that it's in one, I know that it's in the journey to Batu. I know that it's in Batu, and it's this metal, like as you see there, like this broken down, like sand worn metal awning thing, like circular thing. Um, and normally the big size, it's normally a lot bigger, but I sized it down and I thought it looked really cool on the roof. It did have a weird part that stuck out on the other side, but I managed to hide that. And then at the front, I used these train cars sized down that have coal in them and I, I then made some coal sacks and I just took the coal pieces from Seasons debug and I took the rocks from Island Living the debug rocks because they look like big chunks of coal and I just created like these coal mounds everywhere because it's a coal factory so I wanted there to just be coal everywhere and then I used Toolmod to duplicate them so I didn't have to keep making piles over and over and over again and then here I tried to create a cool three-dimensional window at the front but I ended up having to delete it because I had to move the tower the one on the far right over by a tile uh, and then there's me trying to use some journey to Batu objects to hide the part of the metal that's hanging over the edge and then of course steampunk needs to have clocks and cogs everywhere so I created like a huge clock on the tower as well and then I just added a ton more pipes I mean Normally when I'm doing a build and I'm making like a fireplace or a chimney, I try to make it architecturally flow accordingly. So for example, if you have a fireplace on the right side of your build, it doesn't make sense to put the chimneys on the left, <laughs> you know, so I try and keep it aligned, same with pipes. But for this, it was such a small build that I didn't try to make it architecturally realistic. So the pipes just lead to nowhere, but I just thought they looked cool. 
and then I decorated the side with Strangerville like uh, it has that worn down logo for the wall I thought that looked really cool and I, I put it over the windows just to give it a bit of a grungy feel to it and it also has the art style that kind of reminds me of the 1800s so I thought that would look cool and then here I'm trying to create the conveyor belt with desks from Journey to Batu, uh, with the idea that the coal is flowing over that wheel onto the conveyor belt into the building and then the idea was that it would flow down into the basement but I really hadn't figured out how I wanted to shape it yet and I don't know about you guys but that's kind of how I build all the time I don't really know what I'm doing. I get like an idea, like a coal factory, but then the actual shape of it, what I'm going to do, I make it up as I go along, which kind of takes me a bit longer to build. Like I watch videos by like Kate Emerald or um, The Sim Stream or Sadie Sim, and they are incredible at building. And it always seems in their videos that they just know what they're doing next. And, but when I do mine, I'm like, I'm all over the place. My brain is all over the place. I don't know what I'm doing. And I pause the recording a lot because I'll spend an hour, like for an hour's worth of footage, there was probably four or five hours of me staring, trying things out, not recording things because I'm just, if I recorded everything, it would be like a hundred hours just for a build. So I try to limit it and test things out a bit off camera and I don't know if any of you are like that I think that's why it takes me forever to build plus I pack in so much detail I can't help it it's like my ADD I get fixated on an area of a build and I cannot pull myself away I really have to try to stop working stop tinkering on an area and move on to something else so I created this wheel with the chairs and actually I got an idea for making water wheels with chairs I might do a tutorial on that um, and it looked kind of cool and then I put the piles of rocks on it to make it look like the rocks are being thrown onto the conveyor belt. And then here I jump onto the inside because I just needed to move away from the outside. I was getting too carried away and I was like, you know, by the time this build is done, we're going to have nothing but the exterior and nothing inside. So here I'm trying to create some um, the room to flow into the basement. And I tell you what, the awnings, not the awnings, I can't remember what they're called, like whatever the trims are around the edge of the building. I was having so many glitches with this and even in the final result there were some glitches so I think that's just the way build mode is at the moment. So here I'm trying to create like a coal chute that goes down into the basement and at first I used these debug base game bridges. I love them. I love the green finish on them and they can be rotated. Most bridges cannot be rotated but there are a handful that you can and it's really exciting because you can come up with some really cool stuff. But I ended up changing it because I realized I was going to have to try and use too many objects to hide the parts that are showing through. That probably didn't make any sense. But anyway, so then I ended up just rotating the train cars with the coal in it because it already had that look of coal sliding down it. And then I needed to figure out a way to kind of hide the wheels on the bottom. But at first I just wanted to throw it in the area and move on to another area while I my brain kind of figured out in my subconscious what I wanted to do next. And that's, I think, also why I jump around from area to area in a build, because I'll get the initial idea for something, but I don't want to stick around and work it all out in that moment because I'm not inspired to do it. I have to jump over to an area that I have a, have a more fleshed out idea to do. So here I'm just creating a little uh, living room area with a fireplace and just a cozy little place because it is supposed to be a Christmas build so I didn't want to just do a steampunk industrial factory and one of the things that we had to include was a Christmas tree in each of our builds and so I wanted this area to be kind of where they celebrate Christmas together and um, just have this cozy little area so that upstairs area I created to be more livable and so I liked the idea of using greens and bronzes and coppers because I thought that was more of an 1800s feel. And I think Discover University furniture is really good for that. And so I just played around with decorative objects. I just covered that one wall with pictures because I didn't know what else to do on that wall. If in doubt, just slather pictures everywhere. <laughs> And of course, lots and lots of clocks so that they can keep track of time throughout the world. Um, and then I created like a little reading nook 
and the Christmas tree area over on the left and then I just used a bunch of the Christmas decorations but I noticed that some of the garlands I don't know if they're only designed for being outdoors but there are so many objects that look great in outdoor lighting but when you put them inside they go gray or like a dark like a really dark shadowy version of them and they don't look as good I don't know if you guys have come across that issue or if it's just a thing of those objects are supposed to be kept outside or something I don't know but anyway for a Christmas build it works out great just to cover everything in Christmas decoration if you don't know how to decorate something just cover it and so the area leading up to the top of the tower it had a lot of objects poking through so eventually I used the platform tool to just make that whole floor just solid and thick and the thing I love about the new platform feature even though it's super glitchy like if you use platforms the roof pokes through which is really annoying but the great thing about the platform feature is if there's an area of the wall where you've got an object poking through with outdoor lighting in it you can just hide it with pla like solid platforms and you won't be able to see it which I like that feature so up in here I just made a little cluttered study uh, with a desk and I end up hiding the computer kind of like how I did with my Japanese build where I kind of created an ancient looking computer so I was in a rush and I was kind of stressed because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to finish all of my collaborations in time and so I just wanted to be real quick so I just went with objects that I knew wouldn't interfere with the computer area so I rotated that base game uh, vase thingy like planter thingy on its side and then put a book in front and so it's kind of like a computer book <laughs> so your sims can still use it the keyboard is exposed so you can click on it um, and still use the computer but you just won't be able to see the screen because it just it broke away from that 1800s feel so then I just, I mean, this is a gaudy room. It is covered in red and green and objects galore. I was just trying to fill up the area, make it look a bit overly ornate. So here's me hiding that uh, floor with the platforms. And I used things like turned over cauldrons, resized them just to hide the base area of where I had created that topper part for the factory. I ended up turning the light off because I just wanted it to be an architectural feature rather than a lantern. Um, and then I had some ideas on on what I could use some objects for so I just played around with rotating them but I didn't end up using them all and that happens with every build. I rotate a bunch of objects because I think I might end up using it and then I end up not using it after all. <laughs> So then it was a matter of filling in the basement and I really ended up enjoying doing this part because I created kind of, it reminded me of like the seven dwarfs, like you go into this cave area and there's like mining equipment and so I just really had fun playing around with making a super grungy industrial coal mining looking place. Um, and I love that we have the one floor swatch that is like the black stone and it looked perfect for coal so I just used that that way I didn't have to use a ton of coal and the coal does interfere the footprint of it will interfere with your sims path so it was nice having that option to have it as a swatch instead of putting actual coal on the floor um, and so I created all of these arches throughout the edge throughout the walls because I wanted it to kind of have that feel like a underground vaulted ceiling kind of like the London underground train station um, and we, I really wish that we had an option for vaulted ceilings because that is one of my biggest architectural dreams. Tons of arches, vaulted ceilings, just really three-dimensional stuff because I think that's what ends up taking so long when you're building like fantasy based stuff is that you end up spending ages trying to recreate that 3d architecture that doesn't come automatically with the game and like i've said before the walls in the sims are paper thin so it the walls end up looking like they're a bit cardboard and now that we have platforms we can kind of fill in some walls and make them look thicker like for castles but it'd be nice to have some wall decorations that are like 3d architectural pieces Anyway, so I quickly created like a little cart that runs along the tr uh, train tracks into the coal mine. And I mean, realistically, the cart has like one wheel on each end, so it probably wouldn't be very balanced. But I wasn't really that 
fussed about making it super super realistic because again I was on a time crunch and I just wanted to make sure that it was done and that I hadn't spent like hours upon hours in one area and neglected everything else so I just tried to move on quickly and then I love how in the snowy escape pack it comes with also it also comes with a lot of um, really cool debug objects that work great for an industrial build so I kind of created these electronic posts I don't know what's been electrified in that area <laughs> other than the lights so I don't know it, it doesn't really have much of a rhyme or reason but I thought it looked cool and then I used the debug chain fences to kind of hide the archways because I don't know about you guys but when I'm building and I don't put a fence or I don't put like edging on a on an area that's elevated I'm always like oh but the sims are gonna fall over the edge <laughs> even though they don't do that they only stay within the squares of the floor I just I don't know there's always a part of me that makes them too real in my head like oh they're gonna fall over and hurt themselves I have to make sure there's a railing <laughs> so it's a bit unnecessary but that's just the way my brain works and this area I wasn't sure I did have to play test it a bit because the objects footprints were kind of getting in the way and these are really cramped areas but I like to make every area of a build functional so that your sims can enjoy it um, but I wanted to also create something interesting to look at so I could have left the room empty with just bricks but I just don't find that very interesting so I wanted it to look cluttered like there's all this machinery I don't know what the machinery is for I don't know why they need pipes right next to the coal cave but it's there and so I ended up making it like a gaming area that way it's just a fun gloomy place for your sims to play some table games so um, so I was just playing around with the debug pipes and I was just rushing and actually I discovered that if I don't allow myself too much time to think about what I want to do I end up coming up with something anyway I think part of the problem with how long it takes me to build is that I get caught up in pondering and I think because I'm an overly analytical person anyway I'm always thinking of all the different ways I could do something whereas sometimes it's just good to just get it done <laughs> you know don't overthink it just do stuff I really wish that the, the kitchen area that you could put counters under stairs I kept forgetting that whenever you try to put anything underneath the staircase your sims will not be able to walk over the staircase even if it's not interfering with the stairs they just won't walk and it's kind of a bummer because then you end up having to have this really bare area right underneath the staircase and I preferred the way the kitchen looked with the cabinets under the stairs but I ended up having to change that when I play tested it and then I just created this storage looking area but I knew I needed a dining room um, place it's kind of not hygienic but that's part of the fun of being like eating your dinner right next to a coal chute <laughs> but I kind of thought that was quirky and silly and you know Sims is supposed to be a bit quirky and silly um, and I love that wooden fireplace it's not really a fireplace but it's like something you can put over a fireplace but I don't get it because the footprint always interferes with fireplaces unless you pull them out far enough which is what I ended up having to do but it's a bummer because I really like the way that it looks but the footprint on it is way too big so then I wanted to make a floating shelf system um, so I just temporarily have these walls while I put the shelves there and decorated and then later on I got rid of them and I just wanted to clutter it up with bottles and jars and you know stuff you would see in a kitchen because I didn't want to use kitchen cabinets and then as always when I'm using tool mod and when I'm layering things it creates flickering so I like to make an object that's right next to another one slightly smaller and that removes the flickering issue and then I I decorated it with Christmas decorations because I did want the industrial part of the build to also look Christmassy and then I couldn't figure out what to do for that entrance area I ended up liking how I created it like I love how that bar is tucked away in the nook of the wall but again unfortunately I ended up having to delete that because it was a tile too wide and I had to end up um, shifting everything over so it looks a bit more flat in the final product but it was fun while it lasted <laughs> so it's just like this little bar area when you walk in it gives your sims another activity to do and I was just really 
frantically trying to finish the build and just finding whatever objects I could to just layer on the walls to give it some texture. And I love these glass bottles from Eco Lifestyle because it has that green glass which goes perfect with more old fashioned types of builds. And would you really store a bunch of liquids and bottles above a fireplace? Probably not, but I did it anyway. And then again, just layering it with as much clutter stuff as I could. And this is where having pre-chosen objects before I even start the build is really helpful because at this point in the build, my mind has gone yampy. I've got nothing left. I'm running off of fumes. I'm too tired to think clearly. So it's really nice when there's a ton of objects that I've already pre-chosen. And then I can just look at the pile of objects and be like, yep, I'm gonna use that, that, and that. So it is helpful. It can be stressful visually having that many objects cluttered around a lot, but it seems to be the only method that really works for me at the moment. And then I tried covering up the kombucha table to, I don't know, make it look a bit older. And I flipped a bar upside down, hoping that, because sometimes when you flip an object upside down or to the side, the footprint doesn't interfere and you can cover objects with it. But unfortunately, the bar, even when it was flipped upside down, it interfered with being able to use the object. So I ended up having to change that. Now, this trick with oversizing uh, picture frames and then hiding whatever's inside with it's like this debug sign that doesn't click onto the wall I use the back of it I learned that from Sadie Sim because she does that not with necessarily with that object I don't know but with objects she'll block off like an object within a frame to hide whatever that picture is and that way you get the three-dimensional shape of the picture frame without having the picture in the center which is good and then here I am um, I elevated a platform and put the bed off to the side because your sims can still use them and it play tested just fine but I found that my sim was able to get up on the platform get into bed but then coming down from the platform he kept waving at me like he couldn't step back down again and I know that's a glitch because if your sim can get up on a platform and go into the bed then it should be usable but whatever hopefully that glitch gets fixed and then I kind of wanted a utility area that was just full of tools and supplies um, just out there in the open and then on the other side, I created kind of a tinkering area um, with, I ended up putting like the robotic station, which yeah, that's not really 1800s, but I wanted a fun activity. And I reused the similar objects I had used upstairs to just make a more interesting uh, crafting area and add that dark wood and frame everything in. Um, I just don't like boring plain rooms, even though a lot of times in real life, rooms are simply just walls with some objects inside. I always have this need to over clutter everything that I build. Um, so here's me just like covering it with bags and coal and boxes. And I definitely used a lot of the floor stains from Strangerville just to make it look grungy. I don't know. I would hate to live in a grungy place in real life, but it's so much fun creating it in The Sims. And then I created this little gaming area um, just for something entertaining to do. Is foosball a Victorian pastime? No, but at least the get, fa um, not get famous, get together objects kind of have the old European feel. So you can kind of get away with it. And then over here, I just cluttered up the wall. I mean, I don't know what those um, Journey to Batu, they kind of look like sewer caps or whatever. I don't know what those would be used for on the side of the wall, but hey, it adds some shape to the room, so who cares? <laughs> and I love there's these hanging chains that come with um, Snowy Escape. They're like rain chains or something, but I love using them as like things to hang shelves off of or whatever and in live mode they kind of move they sway back and forth so it kind of just adds a bit of animation to a room and it looks like a chain that's just holding something up which is cool and then I just filled this area with coal making sure that the footprint didn't interfere with where the sims have to walk past and thankfully the some of the rocks I was using from Island Living don't interfere with the sims path so you can kind of oversize them and a sim can still walk on top of them and then here I just duplicated this shoot that I made with coal and slightly angled a bunch of the train cars around I don't know, to give it more of an intentional rounded shape at the bottom. 
um, because I don't know it just it looked too much like a train car when I didn't do that and then it still wasn't looking the way I wanted it to so I just put a staircase underneath just to hide the bottom and hey it did the trick so that's what I stuck with but as you can see on this floor you can see the um, trim around the edge of the building has come onto the inside and that happens when it seems like that also happens when you create an open floor leading to the basement or if you do it on any floor I think it does that where the outside trim ends up coming inside and I tried the thing I just learned how to do where you hold the shift key down to delete part of the trim and it only deletes a, that section of it which is really cool but I tried doing that and it deleted the whole trim so I just was like you know what it'll just have to be part of the architecture inside and then on the last touches here I'm just trying to fill out the outside again I ended up cutting off one tile from the width I don't know if I show any video footage of me doing that because towards the very end it was crunch time so I didn't record all of it um, but you'll be able to see the final product in a few seconds so and out here I just put a nice little fireplace and just try to tidy up the area add, uh, add a bit more detail add pipes you know just cover every square inch of that wall <laughs> um, and that was basically it I mean it looks like it came together really quickly but it took me several days to do this even though it's a 20 by 15 lot it took me forever so here I'm just bunging any old item on the side I'm like hey does it look three-dimensional does it go with the style of this build then it's going on there <laughs> and then to kind of cap the underneath of the pipes I used cauldrons which turned out to be a pretty good trick. I mean, the cauldrons do have stone at the bottom, but that's okay. I'm trying something a little different with this video because in my past videos, I put so much focus on trying to make them as short as I possibly could that I would end up speeding through the tour at the end of the speed build. And let's face it, that's most people's favorite part of the speed build video. And since I speed my footage up by 2000% instead of the 800 to 1000 most people speed their footage to, it can be hard to take in all the details of the build. I wish I could slow my footage down, but I cram in so many details that the video would be almost two hours and nobody wants that. So instead, I thought I'd slow this part of the video down and do a more thorough tour so you can see the details in action. I mean, I have sped it up a little, but only by about 200%. So anyway, here I'm just showing you all the details around the build so that you can kind of take it in with better lighting, within the setting that it's eventually gonna be. Now, originally the lot is uh, a different lot in Newcrest, but the lighting wasn't as good, so I just temporarily put it on this lot. Lot. It really doesn't matter what lot you put it on, it's 20 foot by 15, so. But I just wanted to show all the nuances of the build in greater clarity and detail from all different angles so you can get a better picture of what it will look like. Because I know sometimes I cram in so many details that some of you have slower computers and you can't actually download my builds. This one should be fine because it's a lot smaller. But for those of you who have a much slower computer, sometimes you just like me to show you how I built something or the details so that you can try and replicate something think like that that will work with your game and so I thought we'd just walk through as the sim and then also I'd kind of slow things down and, and show you the build from all different angles and so this is the bar area that I created and like I said before I had to cut out a tile on the right hand side so it doesn't have the same alcove nook type of shape it did before which I really loved but I think I think it still turned out pretty good and I used a steampunk uh, family that's already up in my gallery to test out the build. And then here's the kitchen. And I actually really like how the hanging shelves turned out because it cuts off the area of the kitchen, but you can still see through it, which is really nice. And here's my Sim cooking. And it seems like he's not doing a great job because now everything is set on fire. <laughs> Whoops. You never know what's going to happen in Sims. And so there is the destroyed counter, but at least you got to see what the kitchen looked like before my sim destroyed it. I also, if you notice, got rid of the staircase because, like I said before, I couldn't put all the counters underneath. And I just really wanted that area to have the counters in the fridge because I couldn't fit it anywhere else. So I just replaced it with a ladder. I mean, it's not very ladylike to be wearing a Victorian dress climbing a ladder, and you'd probably trip, but hey, it's the sims, who cares? And there I put in a bunch of chimneys uh, where the coal slide is because I wanted it to look like 
kind of dust as the coal is sliding down the chute and it's kicking up all this horrible dust that is not good for your lungs and is definitely not good to sit next to when you're eating a feast. And then here is a more detailed look at how the basement turned out on this first basement level and in a minute my sim will walk through it and you'll be able to see it from a sim's perspective but I'm actually really like the way that it turned out with all the arches and kind of it's bright enough that you can see but it's also a bit gloomy underneath like I would think a Victorian underground coal tunnel cave whatever would look like um, and there's the bottom part I really love this part I think this part and the coal chute are like my favorite parts of the build. I just love that grungy stuff. It'd be really cool if you could actually go into the cave, but it's just going to have to be for looks. And then I know that the bedrooms aren't anything special in this build. There wasn't a lot of room to make individual bedrooms, but I thought that since it's got a coal mine, it suits the build to have these workers type beds. And then my sim is walking around and I put an archaeological table because I was trying to think what kind of activity would work really well around this all this coal. And I thought that chiseling down these rocks has that sort of coal feel to it. So that's an activity you can do and nothing obstructs your sim's path from going there. And then here I'm quickly showing you these debug lights. I love them from Discover University. They don't work during the day, but as soon as it turns to night, they have these really cool beams of light that shoot down. So I've been using them in a lot of builds lately, and I just love them. So I wanted to show them off a bit. And then over in this corner, we have a work ba uh, bench that you can work on woodworking. Um, and then the kombucha station, candles, this game room that we're going to see just real quick. And then I'll have my, t my sim walk through the other side so you can see what that looks like and of course I've sped it up a little bit but hopefully you can still take in the ambiance of the build and so this time we're going to head upstairs and take a look at what I did up there the more livable area with the living room and the Christmas tree and like I said at the beginning even though this is a Christmassy build and I've been too ill lately to post my videos on time so I'm I'm a month behind posting my videos but I figure it's Sims so their year lasts a lot shorter so if you're having a winter fest if you've got seasons installed you can enjoy this as a Christmas build or if you don't like it Christmassy you can just delete all the Christmas decorations and just use it as a regular steampunk coal factory and here's a more detailed look at the little office area and what it looks like even though it's a bit weird having your sim type with a book right in front of it. I don't know, I, th I think it still turned out pretty cool. And here's a detailed view of all that clutter. The only thing is that the camera can jump around when you've got a build in a tower. To be honest, the camera jumps around even if you're on the second floor and it's a really big build, so... I don't know, the camera's just not that great. And I did have some things poking through the ceiling in a couple places, which, who cares? <laughs> I'm at that point where I'm like, so long as, so long as it mostly looks cool, if there's a few little errors here and there, who cares? <laughs> you only see it when you walk in first person mode like this, if you hit the shift and tab. And then I just wanted to show real quick what the barbecue area looks like, because it is a functional uh, space. And like I've said lots of times, I love to build things that are actually functional because otherwise it's just something that looks nice. But if your sim can't interact near it, then you've spent all these hours creating these decorations that your sims are never going to be able to enjoy the view of. And so here I'm just showing you what it looks like at night. And I love the movement of that fan. I love anything, any object, any a special effect in the game that cr can create some movement and animation it just brings the build to life and so it's very smoky I wanted it to have that smog infested look industrial look really bad for your health this is definitely not going to be an eco lot if you have eco lifestyle installed now I've got a bunch of videos coming up I have a snow castle I have a medieval winter village and I have a really cool I have to admit it is probably my favorite build I have a Mortal Engines and Mandalorian inspired steampunk, cyberpunk, I don't know, dystopian city on a tank that I created and that speed build will be coming up. I hope you enjoyed this steampunk coal factory today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it an encouraging thumbs up, subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified about fresh content. As always, I love you guys so freaking much.